live presentation of Retro Sports Network, home of the champions of the past, present, and or future. You know what? I kind of flubbed this up because I'm supposed to start with the recap because we did these two teams yesterday at noontime. It's the Kansas City Royals and Texas Rangers. But we have for you in the first of our several prime time regular season 1978 baseball games until we get to the end of this 1978 replay. But a couple of you had asked for some nighttime stuff. And so Wednesday night at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific is what you're going to get. My name is Ron Juckett. Welcome to the show. This is the 14th meeting of the year between the Kansas City Royals and Texas Rangers. And if you were with us yesterday at noon or watched later on, uh, you'll notice that Texas won the opener of this big series 7-3 to behind John Matlack and the big insurance homer by Richie Zisk. There, not bad for trying to remember what I did yesterday, huh? So today, these teams will meet for the 14th time this year. They'll only meet one more scheduled time, and that will be in Texas. Today, Doc Ellis goes against Larry Gurra. Doc looking for win number seven on the year. Now, these teams are one game apart. They were two, and so that we picked up this one instead of whatever the hell else I had. Oh, I think I had a Red Sox game scheduled for today. So that's not it, and tomorrow we'll do Philadelphia and Los Angeles at noontime. But if the regular season between these two teams ends tied, Kansas City has already won the season series. They lead eight games to five. This would be game number 14 today, and game number 15 will be played by the computer tomorrow. So if we do get a playoff in the American League West between the Royals and the Rangers, it would be right here. No, it would be in Kansas City. And if we get a playoff between any two teams in any of the divisions, it will be decided by or the home team will be the one that won the season series. Now, if somehow we get to the point where there is a season split in the National League at 9-9, can't have it in the American League because they played 15 times in the same division, then we'll roll some dice on screen for that. But that's how we're going to do it, and so this is a big one. The Rangers and the Royals next. As Retro Sports Network presents Pennant Race Chase 78. Tonight from Arlington Stadium in Arlington, Texas. It is the second place Texas Rangers versus the first place Kansas City Royals. And today's or tonight's game is brought to you by DigitalDice.com, the best darn podcast on the web for your sports simulation and replay needs. Find us today on Spreaker, Spotify, iTunes, or wherever else fine podcasts are listed. We did our 50th show today. No, not 50 on one day, but you know what I mean. DigitalDice.com. And so, Doc Ellis is on the mound. No problem, Mr. Waterfield. That's why we're doing this. You and Big Clue, who was a big one from our lunch streams, asked for night stuff, and so by God, you're going to get it. Doc Ellis is 6-6 six and six on the year with a 3-8-3 ERA. This is his 20th start. He only has two left, which does not bode well for the Rangers. Remember, this is an as-played replay, and he does not pitch out of the pen. He's available the rest of the way, but he's showing that, that this is it. So uh, what am I, he's a fastball pitcher and a fly ball plus pitcher at 83 against the Royals. Wrong button first. Against the Royals, this is his second start, and he was lit up like a Christmas tree his last time out against Kansas City. Three innings, seven hits, five runs, all earned. He walked two and struck out one. That is an ERA of 15. His last start was five days ago against the Blue Jays. Eight innings, seven hits, five runs, all earned. He walked four and struck out four in a loss. So overall, 115 innings, 110 hits, 54 runs, 
49 earned. He has walked 45 and struck out 33. The game against Kansas City, by the way, was on April 24th. And the lineup he'll face this evening starts with George Brett at third base. He'll lead off. Hal McCray, the DH, will bat second. My favorite center square, Pete Lecoq at first base, will go third. Daryl Porter cleans up behind the plate. Clint Hurdle is back in right field. He'll go sixth. Tom Paquette, who will leave the light on for you, will play left and bat seventh. Freddie Patek, who led off yesterday's game, will bat eighth and play short. And Frank White, how many all-star starters hit ninth in the lineup? But that's Frank White, and he'll hit ninth. Defensively for the Rangers, Al Oliver, a 5 and a 7 in left. Juan Benitez, a 9 and a 7 in center. Bobby Bonds, a 7 and 8 in right. Kurt Bavakwa-Velva is a 6 at third. Toby Hara is a 4 at second, short rather. Bump Wills, a 7 at second. Mike Hargrove, an 8 at first. And Jim Sundberg is a 10 and a 9 behind the plate. Doc Ellis is a 7 on the mound with a 9.43 fielding percentage. Brett, as we said yesterday, is kind of slumping this year. 271, 10 homers, which is more than real life, and 59 RBI. So we're set to go 92 degrees in Arlington, and the wind's blowing in from left center at 10. And a heat index that kind of equals Lethbridge, Alberta. Really? Okay, so Brett's ready, Ellis is ready. Hope you're ready for our Wednesday night of baseball. Pitch to Brett is a fly ball right center field. Beniquez is there, one out. That brings up Hal McRae at 272, 11 homers and 77 RBI. The Royals at 69 and 57. This is game 127 for them and 127 for the Rangers who are 68 and 58. Pitch to McRae is a fly ball left center. Benitez rides the Schwinn, two out. Pete Lecoq having a great year. 306, four homers, and 24 RBI. I'm being told that it's a dry heat in Lethbridge, Alberta, so it's tolerable unless you work in it. And so what do you do for work besides help Jane Russell model the play heart, play, play text heart, cross your heart bars, bras? Easy for me to say. I can't even get out the joke. Jeez, pitcher Lecoq is a line drive to left. Oliver is there. He'll make the catch to retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. And all bad jokes. <laughs> He's a quarterback for the Rams. <laughs> oh, that's, I'll explain that one in a minute for those who don't get that one. Half an inning in the books. Kansas City, nothing. Here come the Rangers. So, H2O field, if you're watching this live. Well, H2O is the chemical composition of water and so when I thought when I saw the name Larry just take up your warm-up pitches I, I'm the only water feel I could think of was the quarterback from the Rams in 1950 him and uh, was it Van Brocklin Norm Van Brocklin that kind of went back and forth anyway and so when I started to make the jokes about him being the quarterback of the Rams I told the story of um how Bob Waterfield, which is not Chris's name, obviously, uh, was married to Jane Russell, beautiful movie actress from the late 40s, early 50s, and a distinguished lady. And the only reason why I knew her was because she did commercials when my mother still watched soap operas when I was a kid for the Playtex Cross Your Heart bra. That was funny, man. Larry Gurra doesn't think it's funny. He's 8-5 and five with an ERA of 309. He is making his 18th start of the year. He'll have eight more to go. He has won his last three decisions. 8-5 and five with an ERA of 309. Against, well, he's not pitched against Texas. How about that? 
Doesn't get any good to do that screen then. His last outing was a 22nd against the White Sox. Eight and two-thirds innings and a win. Two hits, three runs, all earned. He walked three and struck out three. So overall, Gura, who made the transition from the rotation to the pen back to the rotation, has thrown 139 and two-thirds innings, 122 hits. He's allowed 12 homers, 55 runs, 48 earned. He's walked 48 and struck out 49. A fly ball plus pitcher and a fastball that tops out at 84. He should have just answered that question of Warren Beatty on a quarterback for the Rams. Here is the Ranger lineup. Toby Harrow will lead off and play short. He hit ninth in yesterday's game. Bump Wills will bat second and play second. Kurt Bavakwa must have won some sort of contest. He's hitting third and playing third. It's actually, someone told me yesterday he hit over 400 for the month of August. Al Oliver cleans up and left. Bobby Bonds in right will bat fifth. Richie Zisk is the DH. He'll go sixth. Jim Sundberg is the catcher. He'll bat seventh. Juan Benitez in center will bat eighth. And Mike Hargrove, who normally leads off as the human rain delay, will bat ninth and play first. Doc Ellis made eight pitches in the first inning. Defensively for the Royals, Tom Paquette is a 7-8 and eight in left. Al Cowens is a 3-8 and an eight in center. And Clint Hurdle is a 4-7 and a seven in right. That is almost a completely different outfield than what they ran out yesterday. George Brett, an 8 at third. Freddie Patek, a 6 at short. Frank White is a 10 at second. And Pete Lecoq is a 6 at first. Darrell Porter is a 6 and a 6 behind the plate. And Larry Gura is an 8 on the mound with a 983 fielding percentage. Hera, 246, 9 homers, and 46 RBI. And this starts for Texas with a fly ball opposite field in the left. Pocket is there, one out. Night game, of course, here in Arlington. Speaking of dry heat, 92 degrees. You kind of understand why the Rangers eventually got a retractable roof stadium. And there was no shade here at the original Arlington Stadium, normally or first known as Turnpike Park. Any day game must, in the summer months, must have been an adventure in water drinking. You couldn't drink enough Dr. Pepper to stay hydrated. Here's Bump Wills. 245, 13 homers, and 40 RBI. Hitch, they play in. Wills draws the walk. You know what? I knew that you had done that, and then forgotten. Bavacqua, by the way, Kurt at 168, a homer, and 20 RBIs. Mr. Waterfield used to be a master control switcher and videotape operator at the CTV affiliate in Lethbridge for 16 years, back when they actually had Hockey Night in Canada. Automation forced me to get into home construction, but for the last six, I work in metal, spitting out various HVAC stuff, ring equipment. Oh, God, so you're working out in that heat. And so to Mr. Waterfield, what a good day it has been. Bavacqua, we gave you those numbers. Or that's the kind of day it's been. Yes, that's, get, get it right. Wills. Oh, and a manufacturing plant. Hopefully it's air conditioned. So Wills will go here. Bavacqua. There goes Bump. The throw down to White. Wills is safe. And so that's his 42nd of the year. Bavacqua has a 1-0 count. Not much. Pitch to Kurt is a line drive to Gura. And that's the second out. Brings up Oliver. Oliver at 314, 12 homers and 69 RBI. Or if we get CTV on cable here in Burlington from Montreal, and for years, we talked about this with someone else, as a matter of fact. Instead of the news at noon, they would show the Flintstones. Pitch to Oliver. 
There's a fly ball to left field. Parquette will move over to left center, and that will retire the side. No runs, no hits, and no errors. We go to the second, no score. Daryl Porter, Al Cowens, and Clint Hurdle. Apparently, the punsters in the audience have messed with Mr. Waterfield. Porter at 300, 15 homers, and 77 RBI. Baseball demos, where are you? So, if Bump Wills lies down in a parking lot, is he speed bump? Tip your waitress. Please try the veal. I'll be here all the week. Ellis delivers. Porter, ground ball to Hargrove. He'll underhand it to Doc, and there will be an out. So one away for Cowens. 287, four homers and 62 RBI. There's a line drive to right center. Base hit, first hit for anybody. Going to throw to second. Bonds will throw, not in time. So Cowens turns that into two. You're not blabbing. You're not blabbing. I like it when people talk. We've only driven one person out of here so far. So here's Hurdle. Clint, 269. Six homers and 46 RBI. We'll do some Floyd Robertson SCTV jokes, though, if you're not careful. Hits to Hurdle. Struck him out. He got him on a full count below the belt. Two away for Pocket at 219. Two homers and 17 RBI. Hopefully Lorenzo's continuing to do well. He got a stint put in if you were not with us the last couple days. But he's feeling well enough to, uh, to play Don Quixote. Dodgers are on tomorrow, so I'm sure he'll be here for that. Pitch to Pocket. Ball four. So runners on first and second, two out for Patek. Freddie at 242. Four homers. He had one yesterday, as a matter of fact, and 41 RBI. Ellis from the stretch. Round ball to Hargrove. Takes it to the back himself, the back by himself, and that will retire the side. The Royals get no runs, a hit, and no errors. They strand two, an inning and a half down, no score. Who has a really weak arm in the outfield of all the teams? Was it like, oh, if you got like a one arm? Yeah, Milner's arm is a one. If you hear me talking about on the stream that someone has a ramen noodle arm, that's going to be like a one or a two. Three, I would kind of just consider to, be, consider to be below average. Four, five, and six are average. And I, I mean, if you look at the Royals, Pockett's an eight, Cowan's is an eight, and Hurdle is a seven. That's pretty extraordinary. But if you if you hear me saying somebody's got a one arm, it's the opposite of strat. It's terrible. And um, pick your flavor accordingly. I was always a fan of chicken. Bobby Bonds at 266, 16 homers and 61 RBI. Zisk and Sumberg to follow here in the bottom of the second. Pitched to Bond, struck him out. So for Gurra, that's 50 on the year. He swung on and missed a 2 2 curveball. And there's one away for Zisk at 262. 18 homers and 65 RBI. We're losing people. Pitched to Zisk. Here's a fly ball to right. Hurdle in the corner, and that's an out. So two away for Jim Sunberg at 269. Four homers and 33 RBI. So, yes, an action PC. The higher the number, for the better the rating. And they go on a 1 to 10 scale. So, someone like Frank White, who's a 10, that's as good as you can get. And Clint Hurdle has the worst range of anybody. He's a 4. Did I give you Sunberg's numbers? I think I did. Pitch from Gura. Right back to Gura, throws to first, and that is an out. 
So that will retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. We've played two. Kansas City and Texas are scoreless in Arlington. So White at 302. Six homers and 53 RBI. Brett and McCray to follow. And just in case you missed the standings, Kansas City leads Texas by one game. The Royals are 29 and 37 away from Royal Stadium. The Rangers are 35 and 27 in Arlington. And if you're looking for something to keep an eye on over the last six weeks of the season or so, the Rangers are above 500 on the road. In the East, it's tighter than a tick. Milwaukee by half a game over Baltimore and a game over New York. The Yankees have won four straight. The Red Sox continue to move to Washington. In the National League, the Dodgers by five over the Reds. Dodgers are 37-22 and 22 at home. They played 10 more games on the road than at home. So for those of you who are Dodger fans, that's something to keep in your hat. Philadelphia now leads Pittsburgh by three and a half. And the Phillies are 44 and 23 at the Vet. White at 302, six homers and 53 RBI. Odd uh, warming up a pitcher. I think you can set an option to warm up a pitcher. I think that kind of goes for me um, as part of the cards and dice thing. You're playing them by yourself. Why have I got to warm somebody up? I'm managing both teams. It's not the case here. And so I think that is an option. Well, look in a second. How's that? Pitch to White is a fly ball left field. Oliver in the corner has it for the out. Let me see if I can dig that up. Yep, right here. Bullpen warm-up. So you can do it. An action PC. I think um, Micro League, you could do that too. Mr. Waterfield is a big lover of old computers and plays Pearl Weaver Baseball on his um, original Amigas. Brett's 0 for 1. Alice threw 9 batters, 2 and a third innings, 31 pitches. 1 hit, a walk, and a strikeout. So you can do that, and I'm not going to start to do that. Please don't yell at me. Um, but yes, I'm trying to think. Maybe that was the first game that you could because it did seem like a big deal. Pitch to Brett is a little number down to Hargrove. He'll underhand it to Ellis for the out. So two out, nobody on for McCray, who's 0 for 1. Doc delivers. Ball four. So McCray draws a two out walk for Lecoq, who's 0 for 1. Pitch to Pete. Ball four. So Ellis, you never want to walk a man with two out. And Ellis has walked a pair. Yep. You, OOTP is set up that you can do that that way too. But yes, if you warned him up too early or for too long, it would mess him up. I'm surprised with the name of like Earl Weaver Baseball that there was even a bullpen. But that's just me. Here's Porter. He's 0 for 1. I'd forgotten about that. Pitch to Porter. Ball four. So Ellis has loaded the bases. And two out for Cowens, who doubled his first time up. So McCray on third. Lecoq on second. And Porter on first. Cowens one for one. In to right. Bonds is there. And that will retire the side. So the Royals have left five on through three, and Ellis gets out of a bases-loaded jam. No runs, no hits, no errors. <laughs> After two and a half, Kansas City nothing, Texas nothing. Yeah, he needed a flashback. You honestly think, I mean, Doc Ellis claims in 1970 he threw a no-hitter on acid. 
You honestly think he did that? Here's Juan Beniquez. Beniquez, Hargrove, and Hara to face Gura here in the third. Beniquez at 226, six homers and 28 RBI. Gura's delivery is a base, is a line drive to left center, and Cowens is there for the out. I thought that was going to drop. So here's Mike Hargrove, the number nine hitter, 295. Nine homers and 59 RBI. Actually, he said it was just after he tripped out. Okay. Pitch to Hargrove. That's a win in a shallow left center. Cowens comes in two out. Kind of a hangover. Okay. Well, there's plenty of pitchers who have. I mean, wasn't didn't Don Larson throw his perfect game with a hangover? He certainly didn't. Ex Expect a pitch. What was it, game five of the 56 series? We flipped the lineup. Gura through two and two thirds innings, 35 pitches, no hits, a walk, and a strikeout. Harris 0 for 1. Pitch from Gura is a ground ball to wide over to Lecoq, and that will retire the side. So the Rangers go down in order in the third, nine up, nine down. No, nope, I take that back. That's not true. No runs, no hits, no errors. After three, scoreless in Texas. Ballpark, by the way, as we start the fourth. Playing big. Lefties minus six batting average. Righties is our average. Home runs minus 13% for the lefties, minus 14% for the righties. And as we start the fourth, Old Faithful is blowing straight in from left field at 12. Clint Hurdle struck out his first time up. In the left, back goes Oliver. One out. Max McGee, the unexpected hero of Super Bowl One. He was not their primary receiver. Clock hit, by the way. Tom walked his first time up. Pitch from Ellis. Ball four. So Doc has walked five and three and a third innings. Max McGee was the secondary receiver for the Green Bay Packers in 1966. They go to Super Bowl I, and having a rare paid trip to Los Angeles, he got quite toasted during the, the uh, pregame festivities the night before. Now, if you're a fan of old-time football, you're going to know that Bart Starr's primary receiver for the Packers was Boy Dollar, and Dollar should have received the bulk of the throws there, but Kansas City double covered Dollar, and so Starr had to go to McGee, who, despite his condition, made two huge touchdown catches in the second half as the Packers went on to win the first AFL NFL championship game. Patek is 0 for 1. Pitch to Freddie is a little looper in the left field. Oliver will pick it up. Paquette is on second. And for the third straight inning, the Royals threaten again. Let's see if they can do anything about it. Once in a while, I come up with a cool story. So Frank White. Is he, can he bunt? Can't even see it. Nope. 0 for 1. Ellis from the one. Ground ball to Hargrove. Hara for 1. Back to first. White can run. And we'll beat it out. So 3-6 on the fielder's choice. And, of course, Ellis is pitching out of the stretch, Ronnie. Not the wind. So runners on the corners for Brett, who's 0 for 2. Ellis threw 18 batters, 64 pitches. Three and two-thirds innings. Two hits. He walked five and struck out one. And just because I haven't had the chance to say it, that's the sort of stories you don't necessarily hear about on a Fortnite stream. The kids in the Fortnite stream would kind of ask where in the sky Bart Star is. Pitch to Brett is a line drive to center. Beniquez is there, and that will retire the side. So the Royals have left seven on. No runs, a hit, and no errors. We go to the bottom of the fourth. No score. 
I'm thinking 46 or 49 myself. 85 was the year, I, well, bless your soul, do you know me or something? I was born in 71, and 85 I turned 14, but, um, yeah, pre-60, we're all going to learn something. Here's Bump, Bump walked and stole a base his first time up, infield playing at the corners for the bunt, so Brent and Lecoq play in. We've done 78, or we're doing 78, and I did 82 last year. So I want to get away from that a little bit. Pitch to Wales. Ball four. So Gura gives up the leadoff walk, and that brings up Bavakwa, who's 0 for 1. Second walk. In fact, he's retired. Everybody not named the speed bump. Throw to first. Wales. We'll go to second as Gura threw it away. So Lecoq couldn't get the glove down, and it got away, and so Bump with the speed goes to second. No questions asked. He gets off the ground but he, to hit, but he walked. Yep. Just a bump in the road. Pitch to Kurt is popped up. Porter takes off the mask, and that will be dropped. He dropped it, and that's an error. And Bavakwa moves to second, and Wills goes to third. Gura stands on the mound, just shaking his head. That should have been an easy out. Here it is again, Bavakwa. Porter, it's nighttime, for goodness sakes. How do you drop that? So the Rangers... Don't have a hit yet, but they now have two in scoring position for Oliver, who's 0 for 1. Pitch to Al. Ground ball, base hit. Wills will score. Bavakwa holds at third, and the Rangers draw first blood, 1 0. So, you know, you knew at some point that the Royals, leaving all those runners on, would come back to bite them in the tushy. And it has. one nothing Texas. That, by the way, they're listing as an earned run. Here's Bobby Bonds. He struck out his first time up. Pitch from Gura. In the left. Back goes Parkett. Pavakwa will tag and score without a throw. And so it's 2 nothing Texas. So Whitey Herzog looking in the dugout going, oh, here's Zisk. He's 0 for 1. Hitched a throw to first. Oliver back. So the walk to Wills. The error on the bad throw by Gura. And then the error to Bavakwa. I mean, for when Porter dropped it, and they both scored. Ball four. Segura walks around the mound like a mom trying to get her kid out to take the trash. Still only one out for Sunberg, who's 0 for 1. And there's a ground ball to Patek. It goes to White for 1 over to first. He got the DP ball, but it was hit too slowly. And so Sunberg beat it out. Two away. That, and you got a pretty good DP combination there, Patek and White. But Sunberg just hit it slow enough that it never left the grass. It never hit the dirt. Here's Juan Benitez. He's 0 for 1. And there's a fly ball to right. Hurdle in the corner. He'll make the catch to retire the side. The Rangers get two runs on a hit and two errors. After four, Texas two, Kansas City nothing. So McCray, Lecoq, and Porter. Hal 0 for 1 with a walk. Ellis already has 69 pitches as we start the fifth. And McCray smashes out one to deep right, but Bonds is there, one out. 
Brings up Lecoq. 0 for 1 with a walk. Ellis Wines delivers. Slow roller to Hara over to Hargrove for the out. That's two. Daryl Porter at the plate. He's 0 for 1 with a walk. Well, you're going to get the commercial in a moment. Now, wouldn't you just kind of laugh yourself silly if it was Pat Summerall for true value? Get your 50 feet of True Test Garden Hose for 19.95. Pitch to Porter. There's a pop-up. All right, side. Beniquez will grab it. And that will retire the side. We're halfway home on a Wednesday night. No runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the bottom of the fifth. It's Texas 2, Kansas City nothing. And now you make me wonder, Chris, if Pat and John ever had a conversation about hardware commercials because Pat, of course, did True Value in his understated way, and John did commercials for Ace. He was a helpful hardware man back then. Here's how we got to where we are. Kansas City had three walks in the third and could not score. Texas sent seven of the plate to the plate in the fourth. Al Oliver singled home bump Wills. Wasn't a speed bump there, was he? one nothing Texas, and Bobby Bonds with a sack fly to make it 2 nothing. A girl, one hitter through four, but showing just how bad the win stat is because he's on the wrong side of it. And Doc Ellis has thrown a two-hitter through five, but walked five in the process. So Hargrove, Hara, and Wills, excuse me, to face Gura here in the bottom of the fifth. Hargrove is 0 for 1. Fly ball, right field, hurdle, makes the catch, one out. Kind of a weak little Texas leaguer that just kind of dropped foul into the glove, a hurdle. Here's Hara, Toby is 0 for 2. Larry Gura. 71 pitches through four in the third innings. One hit. He has walked three. One run was earned. The other was not. And he has struck out one. Hara is 0 for 2. Pitch from Larry. There's a liner to left. Pockhead is there. Two out. And now bring up Bump Wills. Who has walked twice. Stolen the base and scored. Gura. Right back to Larry. Throws it to first and that will retire the side. Rangers go in order. We go to the sixth. Two nothing Texas. Brings up Al Cowens, Clint Hurdle, and Tom Pockett. And I have to sneeze. I feel better. Cowens is one for two with a double. One of the two hits from the Royals in the ballgame. Pitch to Al. Ground ball to third. Bavakwa runs over, throws it across the way, and that got away from Hargrove. That somehow goes in the stands, and what the heck is Chuck Knobloch's mom doing here? Oh, my goodness, she got hit by it. So Cowens moves to second on the bad throw by Bavacqua. And somewhere in Los Angeles, Tommy Lasorda has a laugh. So here's Hurdle. Hurdle's 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Ellis deals. Popped up left side. Hara should have it. He does. One out. 
Captain Carl, how you doing, Bobby? Nice to have you along. So Wednesdays, the next, oh, five, six weeks or so, primetime baseball for you, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Tonight, the 14th and the penultimate game of the year between the Royals and the Rangers. The Royals lead the West by a game over Texas. Paquette is 0 for 2, or is, doesn't have an at bat. He's walked twice. Cowan's on second. Paquette, shallow center. Benitez has it for the out. Cowan's won't move. I am doing just dandy, thank you. Did you get any pre order in today for Strat? Freddie Patek is one for two. Freddie's got himself a single. Pitch from Doc Patek. Ground ball to Hargrove to the bag. And that should be the side. It is. No runs, no hits, no errors. The error, well, there was an error. You can't say nothing across. The error does not hurt. After five and a half, Texas two, Kansas City nothing. So, Bavacqua. Oliver and Bonds to face Gura here in the bottom of the sixth. So you started another replay 67 in Strat or which engine? Pitch to Kurt. Struck him out. Second strikeout for Gura. He got him on an 0-2 on the inside corner. So one out for Oliver. Just in case Mr. Waterfield's half asleep. Al, not Fergie. Al has a single. And drove in a run. Pitch to Al. In the left center. Cowens should have it. He does. Two out. Strat playing in basic. Yep. Okay, cool. American League or everybody? Just, just seeing if you're awake. Here's Bobby Bonds. He's 0 for 1. Sack fly and a strikeout. Brown ball to short. Patek has to hurry, throws to first, and that will retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the seventh here in Texas. It's still the Rangers to the Royals nothing. So Doc Ellis gives me the fatigue warning after 97 pitches. Frank White, George Brett, and Hal McRae. Ellis has done his part. That Ranger bullpen, not as bad as Baltimore's or Milwaukee's, but has earned the trust of an eighth grade boy in the soda section of a store. Pitch to White. Here's a line drive to left center. Benitez will make to catch one out. So 27 batters deep for Ellis. 100 pitches. Six in the third innings. Two hits. He's walked five and struck out one. Brett is 0 for 3. Got him. He swung on and missed a 77 mile an hour, whatever it was, for strike three. So that's two. And that brings up McRae, who is 0 for 2 with a walk. Everybody, more of a what if project. I'm using the actual schedule. And you are doing an Al Red Sox fan 67 replay. Tony Cagliano doesn't get hurt in mid-August. We were talking the other day, and you might have a better answer to this because you are a Red Sox fan. In 75, if Jim Rice is healthy, do they get past the Reds? Pitch to McRae. There's a fly ball to left. Oliver goes back to the track to make the catch. Stretch time. Time for the Lone Stars. 2 nothing Rangers. Any mentions of Jim Rice in 643 get you banned, by the way. 
It'll be Zis, Sunberg, and Beniquez to face Gurra in the seventh. Mr. Waterfield says because he struck out too much. I, he might have early in his career. Always a good hitter. Other thing that we want to talk about involving the Red Sox, of course, if you hadn't heard, uh, John McNamara passed away today at the age of 88. McNamara, of course, brought the Reds to the pennant or the NLCS in 79 and got the Red Sox over the hump in, the, in 86, but bungled that World Series beyond repair. But regardless of which, if it wasn't for his managing, they would not have been in the World Series. And so, yeah, he passing away. Captain Carl says, I did hear that Fred Lynn told Joe Morgan. Walpole Joe or, or Cincinnati Joe that the Red Sox were going to win the World Series. They almost did it anyway. Zisk is 0 for 1 with a walk. Gura starts the inning with a fly ball right center field. Cowens goes back one out. So poor Larry Gura. He's sitting here on the mound in the seventh inning. He's allowed one hit. And is down 2 nothing. Here's Sunberg. He's 0 for 2. And there's a chopper to short. Patek in the hole. Throws it over to first. And that is an out. So 2 out. And nobody on for Beniquez. Yeah, we've had some clunkers. And 16-4 to 4 game for the Yankees last week. That always goes over well. But this one, you'd expect these two teams to play tight. And don't let that 7-3 score from yesterday fool you. It was 5-3 going into the 8th. Benique has 0-2. Pitch from Gura. Here's a fly ball to right. Hurdle will go back a few, and that will be the inning. No runs, no hits, and no errors. We go to the 8th. It's 2-0 Texas. Cincinnati Joe. Okay, because you got to be careful. In Boston terms, it was during a special reunion of players from the series. Well, Yaz played left in that series, and Carbo, someone's going to break it open. Lecoq, 0 for 2 with a walk. Pitch to Pete. Ground ball to Harrow over to first, one out. So Al is doing his job. Here's Porter. Daryl, 0 for 2 with a walk. But his error allowed both those runs to score. In the right center, back goes Bonds to the track. Two out. So 87 degrees, and the wind is still blowing in from left at 12. So it's a warm night here. But if Texas holds on... That beer will seem awful cold. Cowens has one of the two hits for Kansas City. He has a double. Freddie Potek has the other. It's only been three hits in this game. Right back to Ellis. Over to Hargrove. And that will retire the side. So the Royals go in order. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. It's 2-1 to one, Texas. So Hargrove, Hara, and Wills to face Gura here in the bottom of the eighth. Mike is 0 for 2. Texas, looks like yesterday, could use an insurance run. Thank you, my friend. Pitch to Hargrove. To short, Patek over to first, one out. And so no runs, two hits and two errors for Kansas City. They've left eight on. It's not like the Royals haven't had their chances. Larry Gura through 27 batters, 100 pitches. Seven in the third innings. He's allowed one hit. Can you imagine throwing a one-hitter and losing it? He's walked three and struck out two. Hara, by the way, is 0 for 3. Gura deals in the left center. Cowens, two out. So that brings up Bump Wills, or Speed Bump. 
0 for 1, but he's walked twice. Rangers two runs, one hit, and one error, and they've left three on. If you missed the postgame show yesterday, Ron Guidry no hit the A's. The A's, of course, fall to 49 and 81, and with the exchange rate, we're saying that's about half a no hitter. Pinch to Wills. There's a ground ball to Brett. Fantastic diving stop. Throws it to first, and the side is retired. What a play by Brett. No runs, no hits, and no errors. We go to the ninth. And, yep, Gura can throw a one-hitter and lose. Clint Hurdle, Tom Paquette, and Freddie Patek trying to change the tide. 2 nothing Texas. Hurdle is 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Ellis. Ground ball base hit. In the right. Nobody out for Pocket, who has walked twice. He's 0 for 1. And Ellis, whose tank has got to be hitting knee pretty soon, would love a double play ball right about now. Won't get it. Line drive to Wells. Throws to first. No. Hurdle no back in. He almost got the double play. So one out. Alice trying to hold on for the shutout. Here's Freddie. He's one for three. Patek has a single. He is the tying run at the plate. And Steve Braun will pinch hit. Braun, a lefty, hitting 292, a triple, and 10 RBI. Ellis stays in the game. In the left field, Oliver, two out. So Frank White, who's 0 for 3. Ellis, now over 130 pitches. Trying to nail this one down. A Ranger win would make the American League West after 126 ga 127 games dead even. Pitch to White. In the center field. He's going for two. The throw to Wills not in time. And Ellis is coming out. Reggie Cleveland will try to lock this one down. He'll face George Brett. But the problem is, if you load the bases, you got to face McRae. Cleveland will go after him. This is his 40th appearance. He is 4-3 and three with 13 saves and an ERA of 159. He came over from the Red Sox. He is a ground ball plus, plus, plus. Or extreme. Fastball pitcher at 89. Against the Royals, it's his sixth appearance. Five innings, five hits, three runs, all earned. He has walked one and struck out three. He is 1-0 and oh with one save. He last pitched against the Twins two nights ago. He went two-thirds of an inning in a no decision. 56 and two-thirds innings, 46 hits, three homers, 14 runs, 10 earned. He has walked eight and struck out 36. The Royals last week, the 18th, touched him up for three runs in an inning. Really, with two out, you're walking? So, Billy Hunter, Jim Sumberg, and Reggie Cleveland. A pretty good starter behind Tiant, Lee, and Wise in 75. They're going to pitch around, Brett. 
And there's a fly ball right center. That's the ball game. Benitez is there, and Texas gets the tie. They have shut out the Royals 3-0. And so Doc Ellis goes to seven and six. He goes eight and two thirds innings. Yeah, he pitched tired. He threw 134 pitches and should have only thrown 123. Four hits, five walks, and two strikeouts. And Reggie Cleveland, who pitched around George Brett, got the fly out to end the ball game. Larry Gura goes eight innings. He allows a hit. Just one. And again, he lost throwing a one-hitter. Two runs, one earned. He walked three and struck out two. And so, all right, come on. So Doc Ellis is obviously our player of the game. So let's play the rest of the day in baseball. A full docket of games. No double headers that I can see. So through August 26th, we start in Toronto. Minnesota 2, Toronto 1. Jeff Son goes to 11 and 11. Jesse Jefferson goes to 9 and 7. Mike Marshall with his 13th save. Milwaukee beats Detroit. Four to two. Travers Jerry goes to three and thirteen. John Hiller takes a loss three and six. Rusty Staub, his twenty third of the year, he drives in two. Cincinnati beats Chicago six to one. Bonham goes to eight and nine. Ray Burris falls to five and thirteen. Evanda Jesus three for four with two doubles. The Red Sox win a ball game. Oh my goodness gracious. Jim Wright goes to four and seven. They beat California four to three. Paul Hartzell falls to two and five. Bob Stanley with his fifth save. San Francisco beats Milwa Montreal one nothing. Gary Lavelle goes to nine and eight. Mike Garman falls to zero oh and five. Cruz, the lone run of the ball game, is fifth of the year. Atlanta pounds out seventeen hits. Roland Office with four of those. As Atlanta beats St. Louis 11 to 9. Scock. No, I just didn't cough up a hairball. Goes to 5 and 4. Tom Bruno takes a loss. He goes to 1 and 1. Keith Hernandez hits his 13th of the year. He drives in 2, going 3 for 4. Baltimore down Seattle 7 to 6. Joe Kerrigan goes to 4 and 3. Enrique Romo falls to 6 and 7. Kenny Singleton is 22nd of the year. He goes 2 for 4 and drives in 2. The A's get no hit one night. They beat New York 11 to 4 the next. Matt Keogh goes to 8 and 10. Dick Tidrow goes to 8 and 9. Mitchell Page, 5 RBI, 2 homers. He now has 24 on the year. J.R. Richard loses to Pittsburgh 4 to 1. Richard goes the distance. He strikes out there. Strikes out 10. You see the cat? What's she going to do, little girl? Bruce Keeson goes to 8 and 4. The Pirates steal five bases. Cleveland beats Chicago 7-2. David Clyde 11-6. You remember that name, Texas, right? Steve Stone takes the loss. He goes to 10-9. And, and Norris, 4-4 four four with three homers. The Dodgers beat the Phillies as the Cat now wants her screen time. Doug Rao goes to 12-9. Randy Lurch 10-8. Jerry Martin, two doubles in his seventh of the year. And last but not least, San Diego 8, New York 1. Mark Lee goes to 3 and 2. Jerry Kuzman falls to 8 and 12. Dave Winfield drives in 4, hits his 7th and 8th of the year. Standings. As we tell you, tomorrow's game at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, the Dodgers and the Phillies from Dodger Stadium. So in the National League East, the Phillies by two and a half over Pittsburgh. In the West, the Dodgers by five over the Reds. In the American League, Milwaukee leads Baltimore by five, and the Yankees by two, or by half a game rather, and the Yankees by two. In the West, you've seen the game. Kansas City and Texas are all knotted up. 
at 69 and 58. Minnesota two and a half back, and California four and a half back. Tomorrow's game, noon Eastern, will be uh, Philadelphia and Los Angeles. And then Friday afternoon's game from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, the Yankees and the Angels. So that's Friday at noon right here on the channel. So Phillies and Dodgers tomorrow, Angels and Yankees on Friday afternoon. I'm Ron Juckett. Hope you enjoyed this one and had a great night. So we'll see you noon Eastern tomorrow for the Phillies and Dodgers. Until then, take care, everybody. Have a good night.